this is the standard home guard uniform, which was the standard battle dress of the British Army. British Army. On on here, we've got the the, the typical what we call a side hat, worn worn like that. Yeah, with the with the Cambridge here cap badge. On the arm here, you've got four stripes, which are how many years this particular person who was Corporal Bill Watts from Kwai, Stoke on Kwai, how, how many years he served with his with his corporal stripes. And here you've got CAM 3, which is Cambridge Air Battalion 3. Uh, this is the, the standard rifle which most home guard would be would have been issued. It's a, it's an American made rifle, but it's called an Enfield, which was it was actually designed in this country, but but made in the First World War by by about three different American companies. Uh, this is the the standard respirator, which would be which would have been issued to all all Home Guard and regular forces. So it it wasn't just a <clears throat> one they had it in reserve that was just a, it, was, it was the standard one and if you and if you watch the uh, dad's arm you'll see that on there you had the mark ii steel helmet with a netting and the netting was for putting camouflage in twigs stuff like that on the side here you've got a a wound dressing so that was easy to get out and, and use this was the standard um, home guard webbing. Difference from the regular army were mainly the pouches and the belt. So in, in one pouch they'd have most probably had sandwiches or, what, or whatever and in the other one a, a grenade and, and some ammunition. This was the standard bayonet and if you watch dad's army that is what Mr Jones says they don't like it up and that is the standard basically the standard British bayonet of World War I. Although it looks very fearsome, it wasn't very practical because it was, it was so long, because once you've got it fixed, fixed to the rifle, it obviously made it very unwieldy. As you just come out of Swap and Ballbeck here, there was a roadblock there. And to get through it, you needed a pass. This is my mother-in-law's pass for getting through the roadblocks, plus her her ID, which is her works badge. Here we have what looks like a tube on on a tripod. Well, in fact, it's called a Northover projector, and it fired phosphorus bombs. So what you did, you popped the bottle up the up the breech with a charge behind it and fired it. Uh, with various results. Well, my dad lied about his age. He himself and his brother went off to Bury St Edmunds and to join the Suffolk Regiment. They were in the army for something like eight, eight years. When war came, he was too old to be called up for, for national service. In 1940, Sir Winston Churchill formed the Home Guard from the local defence volunteers. So my dad went and joined in Swathen Prior. It was with the Home Guard for something like two years before he was actually called up himself. They needed engineers to go over on D-Day to fight their way inland and uh, build bridges. He could write a proper letter, but it was censored and you, you couldn't tell anyone where you were or anything like that. And it reads, my darling wife, I'm quite safe and well somewhere in France. Give my best love to the children and to all at home. Cheerio, all my love, Ray. And on the side here is a little rider, please don't worry. But of course, knowing my mum, she did. 